Buongiorno. Good morning, welcome to this uh, EPM Goes to Digital uh, webinar. I'm Fabio Salomone, I'm the general manager of uh, Stauff in Italia. I'm very happy to welcome you, everybody, that is, I think, a good audience today, uh, to introduce you to that uh, webinar. Uh, the idea of this webinar uh, is started since uh, uh, some reflection related to the fact that still TPM is uh, an important, uh, maybe the fundamental uh, method for making uh, uh, equipment or generally speaking um, uh, capital intensive business uh, growing and making better performance. Uh, what we started to think uh, years ago was that uh, what is happening in the world and the uh, technological and digital revolution that is happening in some way is affecting uh, what is happening inside our factory. We know very well uh, the industry 4.0 topics. We, uh, we hear about uh, how many changes are happening inside the factory. But today the focus is a bit more uh, um, uh, tight and the, the idea is to uh, think and reflect about uh, what are the changes into a methodology like total productive maintenance that has uh, an incredible history. Uh, right now, this year, we are, uh, we are uh, about 50 years uh, from, uh, from the start of this methodology. This is the 50th uh, birthday. And, uh, and that's was a very good moment uh, to reflect on uh, what was the past uh, and what will be the future of this method and how to uh, enhance the um, maintenance uh, process and improve it. So I think uh, the audience is barely connected and uh, now I would like to move ahead and uh, first of all uh, uh, talking about the, the, the main topic that we are going to uh, to to share with you today. Uh, what we are going to think first uh, is about the the past, uh, the story of this method. Uh, I'm a practitioner of TPM too since a long time ago, 1993. I followed my first uh, TPM instructor course in Japan, and was the start of uh, a long story of project uh, and uh, and improvements. But uh, uh, TPM is a key enabler, uh, has been a key enabler in um, um, capital intensive business for 50 years. But uh, now what we see is that the technology is changing the world. Uh, is changing our life. So uh, we are in front of a, a screen, in front of my, I'm in front of a camera, but you are there on your uh, on your laptop or on your mobile or somewhere, and you are going to follow this webinar. And this is a huge change because uh, probably not far from then. 10 years ago, or maybe before the, this pandemic, uh, to make this uh, kind of uh, event uh, in a good quality and a good interaction was very difficult. And that's what's happening. The technology is changing the world, is changing our life. And uh, why uh, that technology cannot change the maintenance? And that's what will be one of the topic today. And uh, because we are working inside a factory, uh, we also have some practical solution. Uh, JMAC and Staufen work since a long time uh, on these topics, and uh, we uh, would be very happy to introduce some uh, solution, very simple, but very much practical to make TPM run easier. And uh, of course, uh, that's uh, the, the content of today. This will be uh, the major uh, topic that we will, uh, we will talk about. Um, now, um, one most uh, important topic is to introduce our, our speaker. And I'm very, very happy to, to introduce uh, my good friend and good colleague, uh, Takuya Sasaki. Hello, Takuya. Good morning, so good afternoon in Japan. And uh, uh, George Zavaleta, Jorge Zavaleta, but for friends, George, hello, nice to see you both there. And uh, uh, George and Takuya are uh, linked uh, from Japan, uh, and they will uh, introduce uh, 
and they will uh, uh, explain to us uh, how the world is maintenance is changing and how the world of TPM is changing with the new technology. Uh, we will uh, look at this uh, uh, webinar, we will follow this webinar together and uh, first of all I would like to introduce uh, my, my, my colleague. Um, first let me introduce uh, uh, Takuya, Takuya Sasaki uh, has a long story, uh, a long career, uh, even if he, he looks very young uh, but uh, has a long story uh, in <laughs> in uh, TPM industry because since the beginning of his career he worked uh, in uh, Japan Institute uh, of Plant Maintenance, JPM. You know JPM is the inventor of, uh, of TPM and uh, then uh, they will talk about it. Then uh, when uh, Japan Institute JPM moved uh, uh, into a new organization and uh, separated into um, the two organization, uh, he joined uh, JPM Solution that was the consultant uh, part of JPM. And then after the merger with JMAC, now is uh, a colleague of, of mine and, uh, and uh, a partner of uh, Staufen because he's working in uh, JMA Consultant in JMAC in Tokyo. Uh, Takuya has worked a long time, as you see, and uh, because of his role, he has a, an important uh, uh, liaison uh, role uh, in supporting a company all around the world uh, and major uh, company applying TPM uh, all around the world. Uh, thank you, uh, Takuya, to be here. Thank you very much. Uh, and. Uh, and uh, also, I would like to welcome uh, a warm welcome to, to George, uh, Jorge Zavaleta, uh, that is, uh, again, an historical uh, consultant and historical pioneer in, in, uh, in TPM. Uh, George uh, started to work in JPM Solution. Then uh, again, uh, as uh, as Dakuya, uh, George uh, joined uh, JMAC, and uh, um, he worked for several customers. Uh, as you can notice, uh, uh, George uh, uh, is not uh, uh, a real Japanese uh, uh, because uh, the face uh, looks more like mine. And uh, uh, George worked for several companies and, and different countries, different customers in, in different countries. So very international experience. I'm very proud to have you, uh, George, here uh, together with uh, Takuya. Um, okay. Let's move ahead. I think we can move on the on the first section and on the first part of of this um, uh, on this webinar. And um, uh, okay, I think that uh, you know this uh, this year we are we have an important celebration uh, because we are celebrating fifty years of TPM uh, since a long time. Uh, we are practicing and applying TPM with very big success all around the world. And um, so I, I would like to, to ask uh, uh, George uh, to start uh, to talk about uh, uh, the story, uh, maybe starting from the story and the relationship between JMAC and the story of TPM. Uh, thank you. Thank you, George. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so today we're here to talk about the uh, evolution of TPM activity as TPM goes digital. Um, and um, we're going to show you the, the changes that have happened from going uh, traditionally using a lot of paper to using it now the tools of, of the future. Uh, so, firstly, JMA Consultants, JMAC, that's who we are. Um, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with us, but just a very quick uh, outline of, of uh, who we are and what we do. So JMAC uh, was established in 1980s, part of, it is part of the JMA group. Um, and this JMA group, uh, the Japan Management Association group in Japan, uh, has different entities, different companies um, that uh, look after different business areas. Um, we do work with uh, HR, education, um, IT, information technology, market research, and many other areas. Um, so JMAC, uh, as part of, of the JMA group, is able to provide support in many business areas. Um, and we can provide business solutions um, in these areas. Next, please, yes. OK. Um, <clears throat> hi, this is Takuya. And uh, I'd like to talk about brief overview of our strength. 
Jane Bach's establishment was 1918, but uh, we have been active as a part of JMS since 1942. Uh, that makes us the oldest consulting firm in Japan. This consulting, um, <coughs> sorry, my voice. Uh, our main contribution to the manufacturing industry is uh, establishing TPM concept and also a part of Toyota production system. As you can see on the uh, right hand side, uh, this is uh, Mr. Shingo Shigeo, who used to be a member of JMAC. And uh, Mr. Shingo created a method of SMED. And SMED is a, is a core technology of Toyota production system right now. And the uh, bottom side, on the right hand side, Mr. Seiichi Nakajima, the father of TPM, who established a concept of TPM 50 years ago. And TPM is still implemented in all over the world. And here is a map showing our international coverage. Here you can see international offices and also the uh, collaboration base with Stalpen. And just with TPM activity, uh, we have been active in 54 countries around the world since 1980s. And uh, here is a TPM journey. Uh, while we could probably uh, take the whole webinar just to explain to you the whole TPM story and the whole TPM journey, um, I'm just going to do a really brief outline here. Um, so TPM, um, also called uh, sorry, it stands for Total uh, Productive Maintenance, but it's also called uh, Total Productive Management, has been active in Japan since uh, the 1970s. And the first TPM award, the TPM award is a certification process run by JIPM, uh, the Japan Institute of, Institute of Plant Maintenance. Um, and that was first awarded in 1971 here in Japan. And the first international, so outside Japan, uh, TPM award was uh, awarded in 1991. The highest world class, the highest level, which is the world class uh, award, uh, was actually first awarded to a European company, uh, Volvo Cars in Belgium in 1999. Uh, in 2018, we started our cooperation with Fujitsu Engineering Technologies here in Japan. Um, and in 2019, our business collaboration with uh, Staufen. And as, as was mentioned earlier, uh, this year is the, uh, the 50th anniversary of TPM. Um, a general overview of the benefits uh, that TPM can deliver. Some of you may be familiar with these. Uh, simply, uh, simply put, these are uh, involved changes to the organization. Good changes, of course. Uh, we have uh, the equipment examples. So, uh, maintenance becomes easier uh, and the feedback from the different data and analysis that are done uh, lead to better equipment, better equipment design if you're doing new equipment design and uh, allows for versati versatility in the, in the production process. Another change that we see is through the people, the staff, the operators, the management, the way of thinking, um, finding problems, how to find the problems, uh, how to analyze those problems, and how to uh, attack the, the, the cause of those problems. Uh, this leads to obviously changes in the factory. Um, the factory is uh, better able to respond to, to different uh, factors, different uh, changes, uh, because the staff are not uh, doing repair work and uh, taking time doing basic maintenance things that are more focused on, on bigger things. That obviously leads to better profitability for the factory, for the company as a whole. Um, also changes in the system, the information flow. Uh, there is a, a way to capture that knowledge, all that data and all that analysis that is done, a way to capture that uh, and make that into a, a learning organization. So the organization itself keeps that knowledge and is able to, to move forward. And also, lastly, uh, changes to the environment, the internal and the external environment. So the internal environment changes by having uh, a better workplace, a safer workplace, uh, a lot less strenuous work, a lot less hard work, 
um, and the external environment changes by reduction of uh, emissions, reduction of waste, reduction of unnecessary outputs uh, that may harm the environment. And um, well, TPM is uh, this year is the 50th anniversary of TPM. Here we want to show how TPM is continuously evolving. Uh, so TPM has always been changing. It hasn't it hasn't been stuck in, in one in one uh, in one uh, generation. Um, so TPM is based on um, breakdown maintenance, corrective maintenance, preventive maintenance, and maintenance prevention. Um, and it started as five pillars, uh, then incorporated three more pillars. So now we work with eight pillars, at least in the, in the uh, traditional sense, we work with eight pillars, autonomous maintenance, planned maintenance, focused improvement, early management, education training, quality maintenance, safety, health, environment, and office or administrative area TPM. Um, one of the main points, I guess, with TPM is finding the losses. Uh, because losses equal costs. I think most people will realize that, we all know that, that the loss equals a cost. Um, but how do we find those losses? How do we analyze those losses? How do we classify those losses? Uh, and what do we do once we have that? Um, so TPM is, uh, groups those losses into 16 big losses in the equipment, labor, and resource areas. And through that, we are able to, to attack those losses and, and reduce them and minimize them. We minimize those with analytical tools. We use very different, uh, many different analytical tools, uh, such as breakdown uh, analysis, YY analysis, PM analysis, and many others that you may have heard of. Uh, and these uh, allow us to achieve the, the zero loss um, result. And going into the future, we are incorporating now new technologies uh, most of us, I guess, are in some form of hybrid work, uh, on-site and remote. Uh, so now we incorporate, we're, we're incorporating AI, IoT, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, uh, using smartphones and tablets, which I think have become very uh, uh, useful uh, this last year, and uh, incorporating uh, cloud systems and cloud storage. I'm John Edwin, President and Chief Officer for uh, quality transformation currently at uh, Tractors and Farm Equipments Limited. We are a tractor manufacturing, agricultural tractor manufacturing company, the third largest uh, in the globe. Uh, uh, well, I love TPM because uh, it's the best vehicle uh, to reach the desired uh, business destination. So I think that's why I love TPM. Unilever in about 74 and worked in many, many functions across Unilever. Roles mainly in manufacturing, engineering, supply chain. One of the biggest things, the biggest benefits of TPM is the, the improvements or change in the culture. I love TPM because it provides the rigor, tools and standards that deliver and sustain continuous improvements. No shortcuts. Hello. I'm Paulo Pica, Vice President Processing Solutions and Equipment at Tetra Pak. TPM is no doubt the foundation of our continuous improvement program. The impact on the supply chain is huge and the results show up in the better utilization of resources through leveling, optimization and better control of inventories, optimization of transportation, uh, faster reaction time by improving the quality of the exchange of information between the frontline sales and product supply, shorter lead times, more efficient uh, collaboration with suppliers and productivity in general. I love TPM because it enables ordinary people like most of us to deliver the extraordinary. Thank you very much. So thank you, Jorge, and thank you for our guest that um, 
uh, give us an interesting contribution from their standpoint, uh, and they're really a practitioner, high-level practitioner of uh, of this uh, uh, of this methodology. But um, Jorge, you spoke about uh, the benefit of TPM. I think that uh, this is a crucial point because uh, many of us are, let me say, lovers of this methodology. We love TPM, but I think that uh, uh, a manager need to uh, reach targets need to have a result, practical result. Uh, please uh, uh, explain us something more related to the um, effect and the impact of uh, the, the real cases uh, of TPM. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so uh, here we have uh, the results um, of a, a TPM world-class award certified um, company. It's a major Japanese uh, car maker. Um, and these are measurable results, the, the, the hard numbers, as it were. Um, <laughs> and you can see here uh, in the top left, the OE, the overall equipment efficiency going up and up as the years progress. Um, the MTBF, the mean time between failures as well, uh, increased up to six times for this company. The unit cost uh, dropped dramatically and uh, the uh, lead time uh, dropped as well, 88%. Uh, indicating a lot of flexibility and responsiveness for this company. Uh, as well, also TPM is maybe best known as part of uh, or, or related to the auto industry. Um, so we have here uh, some results from a, a Japanese food manufacturer, uh, TPM Special Awards Certified Food Manufacturer. Uh, here we have the failures uh, dropping dramatically so going from 104 failures a month to almost zero. Um, defect as well, going uh, from 28,000 down to a very good 500 uh, uh, defects. Uh, OEE as well, reaching high levels and, and keeping at those high levels. And minor stops as well, uh, dropping amazingly from uh, almost 24,000 per month down to almost zero. And as we move forward into the future, um, these results, these hard results, of course, are important, but uh, we also, well, TPM also contributes to other things. Um, so um, now we are, everyone talk, talks about the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Um, so we believe that uh, TPM works very uh, well with these. Uh, and in fact, TPM probably has uh, been working or providing results in a lot of these areas that perhaps before were not so talked about. Uh, we believe that TPM works very well with uh, the, the following um, uh, goals. So number four, number five, number eight, number nine, and number 12. And uh, we believe that uh, TPM will become even more important uh, for a lot of companies as, as things move forward. And some of the benefits, perhaps, that were not measured uh, much in the past, uh, but are being talked about now through the uh, SDGs uh, framework, are uh, the intangible benefits, the societal benefits. So see, uh, here is also the uh, world class, so the automotive, the, the, sorry, the car maker uh, results. Uh, we have uh, the uh, employee, community, and environment benefits. Um, in the past, perhaps some of these were not measured much. They didn't have metrics or they didn't have indices. Uh, but I guess in the last uh, decade or maybe a bit more than a decade, a lot of the environmental indices have been measured. So emissions, uh, energy use, uh, wastewater, uh, and things like that. So these are things that I think that in the future we, we will see more, more talk uh, and more action on, on these things. And going on to the... Uh, Examples of, of some of the environmental indices. Uh, here we have uh, CO2 uh, emissions uh, and the recycling rate from the food manufacturer earlier. Um, so as you can see, the, the TPM uh, results are, while they are very important today for profitability, for efficiency and, and for maintenance and repair indices, they also incorporate other um, areas that benefit not just the company, but uh, society as a whole. 
Thank you, thank you, George. I, I think that this last uh, slide show us uh, that really the world is changing because I remember maybe not too far, but uh, 10 years ago, the only parameter, the only KPI that we were measuring or, or where the, the company were interested to was uh, OE and of course uh, the related uh, efficiency parameter and money and so on. Now, I think there's a totally different sensitivity. I remember uh, the first time I went to Japan, it was very strange for me to see big company uh, having as a core target to improve the social sustainability, to improve the eco ecological and, uh, and uh, the natural sustainability. And now it's quite normal, I think. So probably that means that the world is really changing. Um, Takuya-san, uh, maybe you can talk about something related to these trends that are uh, uh, in the world right now. Yes. Um, yeah, we just talked about the SDGs and uh, we are very serious about the keeping, the, uh, keeping the environment because it is necessary for our lives. But at the same time, well, maybe not only in Japan, but we are facing other issues. Uh, that is decreasing trend of working population. In 2020, we have around 70 million people working in Japan as a working population. And the uh, aging rate is about below 30 which means, uh, by the way, aging rate means uh, rate of people over 65 years old. So you know, one third of Japanese people are already re retired. And uh, you know, when I look at the Japanese government statistics, by 2050, we will lose around one third of working population. It is quite a large number. And also the aging rate will be increased to approximately 39%. So then uh, four people out of 10 people will be over 65. This is very serious problem. And uh, you know, I just talked about the example of Japan, but uh, I think um, same thing can be said to said in Europe and also another issue in Japan that is the uh, equipment age it is very high this graph shows the uh, maintenance cost and the equipment renewal in uh, investment cost in metal processing factory in Japan 50 to 80 percent of equipment is over 50 years old since the installation. This result, uh, the cost for the renewal of equipment investment is the highest in the history. So this is another uh, issue that we are facing. And also, as I said, uh, you no, know, especially the you no. Know, we we could only find this uh, information on the internet, but the uh, aging is also a uh, issue in Europe. Uh, this graph shows the uh, thirty four percent in Europe it is over fifty years old. So then the uh, it is naturally hiring people is the you know, best solution, but uh, no, in this case, it's, I, I think it's not easy. And also, if we have uh, a lot of older people, then knowledge transfer is one of the you know, issues that we need to face. So then using technology might be a good option for us, especially in the uh, transferring knowledge. And through, uh, through the technology application, uh, let's say digitalization, we can make the workplace a lot better. We need to make the workplace where all the people can work and also people who need to take care of family members and making 
attractive workplace for younger generation is one of uh, those are the tasks for the future. And uh, just to make sure that we're all on the same page with the uh, definitions of digitization and digitalization, um, here we have a, a little uh, primer. So for digitization, I guess, is um, what we have all gone through in the last maybe 10 or 20 years. Uh, simply put, it is uh, take, going from analog pen and paper to using computers. So going from scanning documents, uh, using computers to input data, input data into computers, analyzing that with software, uh, and then uh, creating graphs or creating uh, different ways to visualize that data um, uh, with that computer. Uh, digitalization, on the other hand, is uh, moving, uh, it was actually what we're, we're going through right now and into the future, is the use of sensors, the use of drones to remotely capture that data, to analyze that data as well, automatically store that data in a cloud system, um, and then present that to, to us for evaluation. Um, uh, we see this uh, digitalization um, working with TPM in, in various ways, and uh, this is what we're going to show you in, in the next slides. So uh, TPM activity management, um, I guess for some of you who may be a bit more familiar with TPM um, is what uh, this represents. So before, around 1995 or before 1995, there was a lot of pen and paper work. Uh, computers were probably not so big a part of, of, the, of the activities that you were doing. Um, uh, but then around 1995, as computers became more available, um, data input, uh, graphs, uh, visualization of data and things like that became a lot easier. And then around 2010, uh, when smartphones became more uh, available, uh, that meant that everyone had a, a mini computer in their pocket, uh, you know, a camera, a calculator, a communication uh, tool with, within easy reach. So this also changed the way that the shop floor, the Gemba, um, uh, worked so people were able to capture all the problems um, and any issues from from the Gemba and, and communicate that in a faster way. And then in 2020 and into this year, um, because of, of COVID, of the COVID catalyst effect, as we would like to to put it, uh, there's been a, a greater need for for these tools, uh, smartphones, tablets, cloud systems, um, so that we are able to work remotely, work from home. Um, <coughs> and use those apps uh, or develop apps that integrate this into, into software um, for, for using TPM and in other areas. So that's where we are now and into the future. So we're working with these uh, IT partners that we have, for example, here in Japan, we're working with Fujitsu Electronic Technologies um, to, to develop new systems, uh, new softwares, new tools that include uh, AI, VR, AR, um, and then also focusing on the environmental benefits that TPM can bring. Good, very much interesting. Thank you very much for your contribution. I, I think that uh, uh, the trends that uh, uh, Takuya uh, explained uh, and the, the technological trends uh, in some way are going in the same direction because from one side we need to make the labor activity easier and uh, more efficient on the other side because so we need robots to help uh, the old uh, 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 worker like myself, for example, to, to make their job uh, in, a, in a better way. And of course, uh, it's important to develop uh, through technology because we have a multiple uh, char um, challenge in front of us uh, from the economical one because every company needs to improve their performance, but of course the uh, environmental, social uh, impact. I think that uh, at this stage is, it's very much interesting to see what are the technology that are enabling uh, the, the, the transformation and the, and the business in this moment. Uh, um, I think that uh, uh, Takuya-san, you can explain something about that. Okay, um, <clears throat> because of the program I just introduced, Japanese government is actively promoting a concept of smart factory and smart maintenance. 
because of, uh, you know, as we talked about, we are facing aging issue of the factories and plant, and also aging of people and shortage of work, working population. In Japan, uh, the government is strongly supporting industry to overcome those problems. Um, and also maintenance cost of in infrastructure to in is really a problem. And the uh, you know, government is supporting to uh, renew the infrastructure. As a, you know, I, I don't want to say, but it, it's a little bit of exper experimental to um, find the best solutions. Um, and also, um, you know, this technology uh, digitalization will help the knowledge transfer because we are losing uh, experts. And this, you know, these, um, these, uh, you no. Know, factors will make us the necessity for the digitalization and smart maintenance. And it will make our life better and it will make you know, a lot of people encouraged to work in you know, a place, a department or a function like maintenance. And the, uh, I would like to share one, of, uh, one more example of the uh, Japanese government uh, promotion. Uh, this is a vision of smart maintenance promoted by Japanese government. For the reformation of corporate, corporate organization for smart maintenance requires vision and commitment of top management and human resource development structure towards to digitalization and aiming business process transformation. And smart plant or smart factory is utilizing the data, collect data and constructing database. And the uh, you know, people need to, uh, they need to make people browsing or accessing those data to share the information. And um, use, using uh, drones, and also VR, MR, you know, VR, AR, MR is one of the you know, effective way to uh, make efficiency of maintenance work. And the uh, finally, whereas remote control for operation and maintenance through the it's very important, and also uh, through the process of realizing smart uh, factory, smart plant vision, uh, advanced decision making is possible, but because we will uh, collect the data and we can refer to the you know, historical data, so then um, well, assumption or expectation of coming reality is possible. So uh, in other words, um, if we can see the tendency or trend, we can predict the breakdown or uh, uh, prevention of accident. That's that's why uh, you know we need to promote digitalization in maintenance work. And this is actual example. Um, you know this is only a uh, uh, illustration, mm -hmm. but the uh, uh, Japanese government is supporting a company to create voice recognition system voice recognition and communication analysis. And step one, filling out the inspection sheet. If you, you know, deal with paper inspection sheet, it's you know, quite a lot of work. And also you need to transfer data in computer, such as you know, inputting to the Excel file. So, uh, and this one, this voice recognition requires only smartphone, you know, talking to a smartphone. So then, you know, we have the both hand free that um, that you know, lead us for better safety, and it is not only you know, those purpose, but uh, this is very unique voice tone judgment. If I say okay, but I feel something wrong, then tone of voice is a little bit different from real okay. 
So then uh, if we accumulate the you know, voice data, then uh, we equip the AI, then AI look for the similar tone of voice in the past. Then uh, AI pull out the data or the similar situation. So then we can expect the, you know, some unusual situation. So then um, we can well, we can set the countermeasure or we can predict the you know, near future accident, accident or events. And another one, this is a story about uh, you know, only photo and also some of the uh, description is being in Japanese. And this is a, a automatic corrosion inspection by drone. Um, we will uh, show some of the video about uses of drone, but uh, in this case, uh, this uh, corrosion inspection is done by autopilot drone. So then, uh, you know, the people don't have to go to climb up the high place and you know, it can shorten the time of the inspection. It is very efficient. efficient. And another one is the uh, ER AR training. Uh, these are the image of uh, VR training. People receive training by using VR, VR Google. And if the you know, training result is okay, then it's okay. But uh, if it's not good, then trainee needs to do the same training. And the, in the same uh, repeating training, uh, Google show the instruction. So then you know, this is the mechanism of uh, learning by doing. And it is, I believe it is very effective because you know, experiencing real thing is quite rare in the you know, real situation. And as we have been working with Fujitsu um, here in Japan, trying to find solutions to problems in Japan, um, we're showing you this, this uh, summary of, of what we have done with Fujitsu. Um, again, while this is for Japan, I think a lot of these uh, issues translate to other countries and other societies. Um, basically, we have three different um, groups of employees. We have young, inexperienced employees, we have employees with other commitments, and then we have employees who are older, who are at retirement age or very close to retirement age. Um, the solutions that we found um, and we are implementing and we're also developing new um, tools and, and solutions are for the inexperienced uh, group of uh, employees. We are incorporating training with uh, VR, AR, as, as um, Takuya uh, demonstrated a little earlier, um, and having some form of remote uh, advice sessions with, with, uh, with experienced personnel. With, uh, for employees who have other commitments, uh, we have uh, examples of uh, drones uh, as well who, are, who can inspect and, and provide that data. Again, as, as Takuya mentioned a little earlier, uh, and that, that can uh, provide the data that can be analyzed or evaluated um, remotely uh, or from, from, what, from any other location. Uh, and for the employees who are, who are older, uh, perhaps in other locations, but who are very experienced, uh, you know, using of communication tools uh, to have that organizational uh, transfer of knowledge uh, to the new generation, to the, to the inexperienced generation um, uh, through, through remote tools and uh, use of cameras and, and other tools like that. Thank you for this overview, very much interesting. So uh, this technology, as far as we see, impact uh, on inspection activities in maintenance uh, activities and in maintenance prediction uh, activities. I think that for safety and for failures, it's crucial, absolutely, to have information from that. 
Um, so thank you very much. I think that um, unfortunately we don't have so much time to go in detail for every every solution, but it's very much interesting to see how the world and the technology is uh, is are impacting in the um, maintenance activities. I think that uh, the point that you mentioned, Sasaki-san, so the cost for renewal and the cost of maintenance are, are really becoming uh, crucial because. Uh, we are going into a world of automatization of equipment and uh, the money that companies are, are spending on these uh, topics are huge. And the idea that uh, this renewal has a short life is uh, unsustainable, of course, and we need to guarantee the best uh, uh, maintenance performance uh, uh, at all time. And, but uh, coming back to uh, specific TPM activities, I know that uh, uh, you, you make some uh, interesting, uh, you find some interesting solution to, uh, to speed up and to support the TPM activities. Can, can you please uh, talk about it, uh, George? Uh, yeah, so um, we've been working with uh, Fujitsu Technologies here in Japan, so we've been developing a few tools. Uh, this is the introduction. Uh, of what we've been working, oh, sorry, what we've been using, uh, and this is the digital F tag. So the F tag, uh, maybe you are all familiar, is the uh, the uh, little piece of paper that you put uh, when you find a problem, a breakdown, a, a fault, or or, a, or some issue. Uh, you usually attach it to the to the equipment, to the machine, as you can see on the on the bottom left of the picture there. Um, and so these. Uh, you know, it, it, it takes time to write one up, it takes time to then put that data into an internal system and then uh, to have that look, uh, or, or the problem solved by whoever is responsible or, or finding the, the solution or, or things like that. Uh, but then we, we are now working with a digital left tag, so this is uh, inputted through a smartphone or through a tablet and this can be done in the, in the shop floor directly uh, and you can have all that data inputted and then it immediately gets into the system or if you need if needed it can be uploaded into the system later and then that uh, can have real-time progress uh, checks and real-time uh, contact with whoever is is needed to to be contacted for for that issue and um yeah we, we would like to introduce the uh, overview of our digitalization um, support. As George mentioned, the digital left tag, the digital left tag captures the abnormality or defect, and the uh, data is transferred to CMMS. In this case, we, you know, we usually work with the Plantia uh, that is produced by uh, Fujitsu. And the uh, this data, uh, this CMMS, computerized maintenance system, uh, displays the location and quantity of defects. So it is very uh, good visualization of what is going on, on in the factory. And the left hand side, left -hand side bottom is another uh, application called uh, operation management system. And if you record, daily operation data in this system. Then uh, it generates the graphs, you, as you can see on the right hand side. These are the uh, production related data. Uh, for example, OEE and downtime loss, performance loss and more. So that no. Maybe like 10 years ago, we are using Excel and you know, try to create a graph like this, but they, now it's all automated. And next, please. And yes, yeah, so this uh, next one shows you maybe a bit more detail of the digital activity board that we uh, have for autonomous maintenance. Um, so the activity boards, uh, which some of you may be familiar with, are just a, a compilation uh, a gathering of all the data, all the indices, and all the activity that has been done in that particular uh, pillar of TPM. 
uh, usually that's a physical board in the in the shop floor in the gemba or maybe in the hallway of the factory or the plant uh, but this is um, a, a digital version of that so again going back to the f tag that we had earlier um, you can have all the f tags uh, all the data for the f tags uh, in in displayed you can see where they are located in the, in the plant uh, what kind of f tags they are whether they are safety f tags or production f tags or maintenance f tags etc etc and then you can have that data visualized in real time um, to, to display that and see the progress and see where maybe something is not being done or where something has been solved and, and uh, share that in real time with all the stakeholders, uh, whether within that same plant or within the whole company uh, in general. And this, <clears throat> this chart shows how we support our client in terms of digitalization. Um, so, well, we are kind of out of time, so you know, I, I will just you know, we'll talk about the summary. Uh, the importance of this chart is um, improving maintenance skill and maintenance system comes first. And after that, uh, we will collect the maintenance data and analyzing the maintenance data to select the most suitable maintenance method. And you know, once we create the you know, solid foundation of maintenance system, then we will apply the technology. And uh, we are planning to create travel, travel FAQ, remote assistance system, inspection drone, and remote control operation method. And you know, these are you know, possible because uh, we have really good collaboration with Fujitsu and Fujitsu Engineering Technology. Uh, we have tools we can use and the uh, even if you have the tools, you need to understand how to use and how to use is our part and the you know, system provider and the metal provider coming together. It's very strong, uh, strong option for the you know, all manufacturing industry. Okay, I think this is a very important point, um, uh, Sezaki-san, because uh, uh, the role of the consultant in some way is a bit changing, not only pure methodology advisor and uh, saying how the single step has to be performed by uh, the company, but also a support in providing advice in which to use and how to use it. I think that how to use it is very much important. I, I see some risk in this moment. Uh, in Stauffen, we say the uh, digitalization of losses. So the risk of uh, not uh, improving or not improving anymore, but just uh, moving the loss into a digital activities. And in my opinion, this is a big risk. And uh, that's why uh, I, I, I appreciate that, that roadmap and, and that vision. Uh, but, you know, uh, as an old practitioner, I, I, I'm in love with uh, autonomous maintenance. And so I like very much the FTEG <laughs> system because uh, I think that except for the statistics and they're very much important and also the visualization, that it provides value to the people that uh, point out uh, the, the Fuguai, point out uh, the, the abnormalities. Because I think that it's a good way to say the people this is important for the company because we use technology to detect minor uh, uh, abnormalities and this is an important, let me say, um, uh, uh, behavior uh, that help people to understand how, how, how is it important to inspect, to observe and to look at the machine as, uh, as a something that has no fuguai at all, has no abnormality. Uh, in, in, in your experience, what is the uh, impact? So the people like to use that kind of technology, for example, uh, you find uh, people, um, also maybe the older, like, like me, uh, are uh, open to use that kind of technology. What is your experience? Hmm. Well, I think the you know, first point is, for example, FTAC, it requires manpower and man hour to uh, create FDAT. I mean, um, 
as you know, we you know we are encouraging to create F tags as much as possible. So then, you know, it's a lot of time and manpower. And I think younger people dislike such a manual job. But then uh, with digital F tag, we can reduce a lot of manpower and man hours. And yeah, I have uh, data. I, I mean, this is the simulation data. But uh, in one factory with 200 people, we can reduce more than 500 hours for uh, making f tags. Oh, this is a very much important. Uh, and also, it's important to, to see that uh, technology is not going only on the big topics like big breakdowns or, or uh, uh, inspection with drone, but also in practical teeny things that we have to do uh, daily on, on the shop floor. So that's really, really, really important from my point of view. So I, I think that um, uh, time, time is, we are okay in time. So maybe we can move uh, through, uh, through the presentation and uh, open the uh, uh, question and answer section. Um, as you see, probably uh, in the bottom of the screen, uh, you are uh, we're uh, uh, waiting for your question. So if you have uh, any doubt or question, uh, please uh, uh, submit it uh, to to us, uh, to our expert, uh, and so we will be more than happy to 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 discuss about that. Let me check if there's something. Uh, okay. Okay, so uh, first of all, um, okay, we were talking about the F-tags and, and the people uh, activities in the game, uh, in, the, in the shop floor. And uh, the question is uh, how much uh, digital TPM, so this kind of uh, technical uh, device, a technical solution, will help uh, in the people involvement. So uh, how much uh, these uh, elements, these tools, can support or can involve people more than before. And this is positive for people. So they do they appreciate, do they uh, are, are affected in positive or negative way? Uh, if you want to uh, share your experience. Um, yeah, so uh, it, it, yeah, it's definitely a positive. Um, so the, the main reasons for that is that the technology allows people to communicate um, with, with, with all, the, all, the, all the relevant stakeholders in, in, the, in, in the plant so, um, and in real time as well. Um, so I, I think that the, the use of technology is, is definitely making people um, more aware of, of what issues there are um, without having to wait, say, maybe for that weekly meeting or that monthly meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I think when, when people are able to attend in-person meetings, um, it, the, the, the use of technology in between those in-person meetings will, I think, make uh, stronger relationships um, with everyone. Um, I think also with, with the digital uh, tags as well that we were mentioning, um, it also, I think, has other benefits. So for example, um, uh, before you had to not just put the F tags on the equipment, but you also had to take them out. Um, and if you didn't take them out, they, they would stay there. And that also could possibly be a risk, um, especially say in, in a food or uh, processing uh, plant. Um, so by having these digital, digital tags, um, uh, you have that, you, you eliminate that, that risk as well. So uh, th th there are different uh, benefits, I think, to, to use of these technologies. Yes, it's an uh, easy way to let people know the condition. I mean, like the uh, location of F tag, which is defect. And the, uh, you know, I, yeah, as George said, I've seen so many tags, you know, just forgot and left on the machines in many factories. So we can avoid such situation and let people know, uh, know things that is not right. Good. By I, using this stuff. I, I fully agree with you. So I, I also think that uh, for new generation, uh, communicating with, uh, with a uh, mobile, uh, with a smartphone is definitely natural. 
it's uh, it's more much more natural than going to a, a computer and, and, and put information or writing a piece of paper uh, and on the other side is keep the evidence because uh, the, the basic reason why we have texts is to keep the evidence of abnormalities, not just forget it. And so I think that's a good point. So um, thanks for the, the question and I, I, I fully agree with what you say. And uh, maybe we can uh, see the following uh, question. Uh, do you think that digital evolution will change the spirit of TPM? Do the traditional TPM will become a commodity? Oh, uh, so we are going to retire uh, or will we keep our role of uh, methodology? So uh, do, do you think that uh, the TPM right now is uh, something that add uh, tools and technology to the uh, traditional, to the existing TPM, or does it take place of the old, of the old one? What, what's your position on that? Uh, well, I, I think TPM will, will not become a commodity um, because I think TPM is more than that. Uh, TPM is is a whole company process. It, it's a it's a way to change uh, the, the thinking processes of the. Of, within the organization and also TPM is, is always evolving um, and adapting so as, as uh, we presented in in the um, in, in the slides before there um, TPM has been changing throughout the years um, so I think this is just another step in, the, in that evolution and I think TPM is, is quite good at uh, at, um, at incorporating all those technologies so incorporating say when, when computers started being used more widely it incorporated that um, and now when smartphones as well, cameras, uh, drones and sensors as well, alarms and things like that. Those have been incorporated quite well. So I think these new technologies are just going to, to enhance TPM and, and bring it to the next level. I will agree. Uh, I, I was thinking that probably um, the role uh, of TPM in terms of, let me say, change management system, uh, it's crucial. And probably it, it will be more and more important in relationship with the new technology because uh, one thing that sometimes we forget is that introducing new technology is not just changing uh, a machine, but uh, it, it's a transformation of behavior of a working style and, and several things. And we, if, if we don't help that transformation, that change uh, with a, a structured path, with a structured methodology, with some clear target, for example, uh, maybe this can be a mess uh, or almost that, that, that my opinion. So uh, I think that sometimes when we uh, enter into the uh, uh, technological uh, situation, we leave the, uh, let me say, the, the, uh, the 90s where it uh, seems that uh, SAP or the ERP was the solution for every uh, problems in the company. And uh, we experienced uh, huge problems uh, in, in the changes. And, uh, and, and that's, in my opinion, a, a crucial element in this uh, discussion because uh, many companies, I don't know what's the situation in Japan, but right now are using technology basically because let me say it's a sort of fashion uh, it's up to date to have uh, robots or, or something digital in the factory and uh, and the, the financial support of the government are pushing in that direction but the risk is due uh, uh, the, the wrong to take the wrong road uh, to to have the wrong path in doing that um, it, it is do you have any experience on that? So uh, do you see that risk uh, in that technological development uh, in, in the factories? Uh, yes, I mean, um, not with the advanced technologies, because, well, let me be honest with you, with advanced, advanced technologies, we are still um, trying in the trial phase. But uh, for example, uh, ERP, CMMS, there are many companies you know, who cannot use the system in right way because the you know, first setting was wrong. 
So for example, if we go into the client site and they are collecting data in CMMS and ERP, but uh, no, definition of the data is different from you know, what we need. So then they cannot find out the actual condition by CMMS or ERP. That's why we are, you know, we are creating um, you know, CMMS with Fujitsu engineering technologies. Okay, great. Uh, so um, I, we have a, a new question uh, coming out uh, from uh, the audience, uh, and uh, they say, um, are some of the tools you have shown also suitable for small companies or only for large companies? So I think this is important because you may know that in Italy, uh, the major part of the business is run by small, medium, but basically small enterprises. And um, for that company, sometimes the technological um, development and the investment can be sometimes seen as uh, too high or unsustainable. And uh, also the tools. Uh, I, I think that these tools, for example, the F-Tags can be very easy to, to use. Uh, but uh, what, what is your experience? Do you have experience also in a small company or only in big or large enterprises? It is very difficult to answer. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, let's see. Um, yes, digital f -tag. I think you know, it's suitable for small companies. Uh, but the uh, no, other thing is for um, medium size or above. Okay. But no, that, that's why I think the consultants need it. I mean, you know, we can teach how to do the data analysis in most appropriate and most effective way. So okay. that's you no. Know, kind of our secret, isn't it, Fabio? Okay, <laughs> I agree, I agree. I think that there are, uh, probably in this moment, uh, uh, what, what I've noticed is that many apps and many um, digital components like sensor, for example, except for the shortage that we have in this uh, month, but uh, is decreasing their price. So probably uh, one element uh, that, that makes the difference is if we have uh, um, um, an, a manufacturing execution system in the factory, an MES uh, on, 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 the, on the factory or not. Because if we have it, probably the cost for connecting uh, apps or connecting sensor is quite uh, uh, acceptable also for a small company. If you don't have it, probably you have to look for an uh, integrated solution that maybe are a bit, uh, the cost is a bit higher and it, it depends a lot probably on, on, this, uh, on this point. And uh, how is the, uh, the, um, the digital evolution in Japan? Does it affect only on a large company like Denso, Toyota, and Matsushita, or, or, or also uh, is touching the small, medium Japanese company? Hmm. Mainly large company, but uh, if the top management is you know, motivated to make it, make the factory or make the company better, they will invest, but uh, no. Um, we, we usually advise minimum, minimum investment for maximum output. So no, as much as we can do, then we will give the uh, advice that will make the maximum output with minimum cost. I fully agree. I, 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 I can also say that uh, in my experience, uh, family entrepreneurs are normally, uh, let me say quicker and uh, uh, in, in making uh, important investment. Uh, when we're talking about a new machine, uh, in my experience, uh, the, 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 the system, the, the small, medium family enterprise has a decision-making process that are much more quick and eff effective than in the large company. Uh, maybe in this moment, there is a sort of uh, fear 
about uh, uh, the new technology because if you have to buy a drill machine uh, or a very traditional machine maybe uh, the entrepreneur is uh, uh, available to put 100,000 uh, euro in, in a new machine. Maybe if we are talking about new technology, one fear that is basically based on our experience is that uh, this technology maybe in two years is old and maybe the investment will last not for a long time. That's probably uh, 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 an interesting point to, uh, to, to understand. I don't know if uh, probably the software will be easier to maintain and to develop uh, in, in, the, in the next future because we see every day we have an update of our apps in our mobile and that's, in, in my opinion, good. Hmm. Yes, um, I agree. Um, that's why the uh, you know, right now majority of software is you know, on SaaS, the, you know, the system is in cloud and we access from the you know, here. So then the uh, you know, maintenance cost of the software can be minimized. Mm -hmm. So you know, what we are encouraging to our client is using the existing equipment as much as we, you know, they can do. And they, you know, we, we are trying to maximize the out output of the equipment, but we need to um, detect or identify the condition of the equipment. That's why uh, you know, we, we are encouraging to use some you know, digital tool like uh, CMMS and the uh, digital app or the you know, uses of sensors. Those are you know, not cheap, but not expensive. Okay. And, and also maybe if I can jump in there, um, it's also, I think, the a lot of these tools that we have, we have talked about, they can be introduced by themselves. So they don't have to be introduced all together. Mm -hmm. um, for example, the, the digital tags can be introduced uh, just by themselves, uh, not necessarily with the whole system. Um, so then there's you know, steps that maybe can be, can be made um, depending on the, on the situation, um, like you said, with, with smaller um, uh, enterprises. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you, George. But probably that means that uh, a gradual uh, development can can be possible uh, on, on these topics. Okay. Uh, yes, definitely. I mean, you want to get some results and and then move move to the next step. Okay. Yeah, connectability is great in these days. So you know, you can connect many things together. Yeah, I I fully um, agree. So we have uh, two more questions uh, from the audience. Thank you for submitting your, your question. Thank you very much. So uh, the first one is uh, how long does it take to develop a smart, smart maintenance? So I think that probably this is partially related to the, uh, our last uh, words. So um, uh, a gradual path maybe is possible, I think. But uh, in your experience, developing a smart maintenance system, so probably more predictable, more digital based. Uh, uh, how much does it take to, to have this kind of path? If we can say at the, a certain moment we reach uh, the, the enough higher level. It is very difficult. <laughs> it is very difficult to say. <laughs> Not but, easy uh, question today. <laughs> 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 but uh, you know, uh, using something like uh, digital app and installing a sensor maybe uh, can be done in short time. But uh, uh, you, know, you know, coming up with a prediction, we need historical data. So, yeah. you know, well, I think I don't know, maybe minimum one year to make the system work in the way you want. But um, yeah, uh, that's really a difficult question to answer. Mm -hmm. So should we say that uh, uh, starting the path uh, can provide, at, at the beginning of the path, you can have results, uh, but to integrate and to develop a real predictive one, we need to have developed the, the data uh, base, uh, in order to have uh, enough information to, to run the prediction and on the other side to develop uh, the, the model behind that uh, through artificial intelligence or what else. I think that 
there's no plug and play solution in this moment, I, I can imagine. So uh, we are in an explorative uh, era. So uh, we cannot buy the AI predictive uh, maintenance system uh, from the market uh, and then plug and play. And then uh, the day after we are into the smart maintenance. Probably we are still in a phase where each company has to customize the process uh, on this uh, on, on, on this body. Well, what do you think? It is correct. I truly agree, and I really appreciate your comments. It's you no, know, it's the same as what we think. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, other two, um, one that that's crucial. This is difficult. What is the return on investment of a digital TPM? Uh, I, I will start to guess uh, as first. I think that uh, the return on investment of the digital TPM is uh, probably not that different from uh, an, a traditional TPM because the TPM has an incredible return of investment in my experience. So normally a good TPM project uh, in less than one year uh, bring back uh, incredible results. Uh, but, and more than what you're uh, investing. Uh, I think that the, the digitalization of TPM can enhance and uh, make the TPM more sustainable and more quick in this path. And, um, but tell me your experience because I'm very interested on your answer. Wow, we have a lot of difficult questions. Yeah, and <laughs> we have a very good um, audience. Yes. Well, when we meet with potential clients, mm -hmm. we usually say, uh, in three years, ROI on TPM will be 11 times. And I think it's almost the same. If you do the you know, TPM in the right way, maybe the uh, yeah, 11 times is possible. Mm -hmm. But because, you know, if we, you know, we are talking about digital TPM, but then this digital part is the, you know, uh, things like, uh, uh, things like, you know, things that will be necessity for the you know, factory in the mm -hmm. future. So if we put together, it is very difficult to answer, but uh, no. if you implement TPM by using digital technology, I think you know, maybe 30 times because um, we need to invest to the digital, digital tools, but at the same time, we can reduce the manpower and manpower. Good, good answer, uh, Sasaki-san. I think that the, it's true. Probably um, we're now talking about a digital TPM as a, a, a separated thing, but it's probably simply TPM uh, in, in, the, in the future. So uh, probably in, in, in five years, we will ne never talk again about the digital something. Everything will be uh, digital or, or not existing, probably. So that that's simply the, the, the story. Uh, okay, uh, last one, because I think we are uh, going close to the end. Let me see uh, the question. Okay, uh, are human resources generally available for a digital TPM or to uh, we have some major resistance. I think it's interesting because we spoke about uh, FTEGs and probably this is good for a uh, young generation. But if I think to, for example, maintenance engineer or maintenance operator, uh, are, do, uh, are they, um, let me say, available to use this new technology or do you find that the typical resistance in Italy, we say um, that the major uh, kind of re resistance is uh, the I always made that way. Why I have to change that, that, that the biggest resistance that we found uh, in the factory? And what is your experience? Uh, 
uh, in maintenance, basically. Uh, do you find uh, uh, people available or interested in using this new technology or do you find some uh, res uh, resistance uh, in, I think, technician or operator in maintenance? Um, the, 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 perhaps the, the most uh, resistance perhaps that we have encountered with, especially with the digital F tags, is not so much resistance to the use of the technology, um, especially now, I think, with smartphones and tablets, I think everyone is very comfortable with that technology. Um, you don't have to be an expert, you don't have to know how to code an app to, to use the system. So um, the technology itself, I think, was not has not been a big resistance. It's more of the visual impact. So especially with F-Tags, if, if you've been working with F-Tags or you've used F-Tags, you see uh, the machine or the equipment covered in F-Tags, right? Um, especially if there are a lot of, of problems. And that is a very visual impact. You're like, oh, okay, look, there are a lot of problems. Uh, we need to focus on this machine. We need to uh, see all these things. Look at the red tags. You know, these are the critical ones. We need to, we need to get on those straight away. So it's very visual. Um, so the, the resistance is perhaps that people think that that's not going to happen. But um, with technology now, especially with a lot of 3D uh, image captures and 3D modeling that, that can happen, um, you can actually have that as well in the, in, in the software. In, so you have the visual uh, impact as well, but it, it's, it's just in, in, in the software itself. Yes, uh, we don't see uh, no, resistance from people, but uh, maybe we, we see, well, actually we see the resistance from the company itself mm -hmm. for using cloud, I, you know, cloud computing, cloud network, mm -hmm. because you know, those you know, companies want to have everything inside their you know, facility. Okay. There are disks. You know, this one, <laughs> yes, well, this one will make the you know, maintenance cost of the you know, technology really high. That's mm -hmm. why um, you know, using the uh, cloud computing is you know, resulted in cheaper cost, mm -hmm. better efficiency, better, um, you know, better status of the software itself. Because mm -hmm. as you said, the, you know, you know, maybe like you know, every month you get uh, upload, you know, upload, update, update. Yeah. yeah. So then you know, everything will be the latest status. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think so. I think so. I think I see recently uh, more people, uh, let me say, making resistance to that. Sometimes because of safe um, security reason, because you know the recent uh, attacks. Uh, in uh, in uh, in computer, but definitely probably this is probably more risky in, in this moment to have your own data on your own computer, because if it fails, you're dead. And uh, he, cloud computing has, from that point of view, more uh, let me say uh, secure uh, storage. And until we don't find a, a so incredible acre that destroy the <laughs> driver of uh, of uh, cloud computing company so but anyway i think it's also that probably uh, that kind of resistance that you mentioned is probably also related to some uh, let me say uh, management styles uh, and that because you know sharing the data is always uh, sharing the power sometimes and uh, probably the transparency is seen. Not all the company, not uh, all the company, are so advanced to be ready to share their data and to use the transparency that uh, this uh, technology help us to have. Okay, so I think that we have to stop right now the the, the session. Maybe we can uh, make some synthesis of uh, the major. Uh, the major uh, topics uh, that we uh, discussed and maybe some, uh, uh, let me say, take home uh, message uh, we can share with uh, the audience. Uh, uh, please, if you want to make some uh, point out and some uh, take home message uh, for us. Uh, yes, yeah, so the, the take home message is uh, TPM is evolving all the time, so we'll continue to evolve. TPM will continue to evolve. Um, the digital, digital, digitalization is happening, uh, so it's, it's better to, to be prepared. 
um, and it's still not too late. You know, we, we we're living through it right now, so it, it it's very easy to to get on board. Um, the tools are ready. Um, we are we are already implementing some of those tools, and we're also developing some more tools. Um, and uh, you know, it it is a risk. There, there's always a risk. There's there's nothing uh, that doesn't involve risk, but take this risk as the opportunity to shine, you know, to, to improve, to, to become better, to become more profitable, to, to grow. Um, and as well, yeah, everything is moving fast. Um, just in the last 10 years, uh, we have seen so many changes. It's just in technology. So um, it's also best to be prepared for, 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 the, for the coming changes. Who knows, yes. who knows what is happening? <laughs> yes, uh, we, are, we are living in a very fast moving uh, era. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do anything, nothing will be changed. So, you know, making action is important thing in this you know, time. I, I do agree. I do. We, we have to be prepared because for sure, uh, uh, probably 10 years ago or 15 years ago, the decision-making process was more based on internal reason or internal target. Now we have to face what is happening outside our company. So we have to be prepared to the fact that our competitor, maybe in, in one or two years, can be much better than us. Uh, I remember someone says that uh, uh, in three years, any company can fail. Uh, because uh, what is changing, but this was right probably 10 years ago now. I think that uh, one and a half or one year is enough uh, in, that, uh, evolving, in, the, in that evolving system. But anyway, uh, we can just r remember to, to the audience that I think that uh, the big advantage of this time is that technology is easier uh, than in the past. Uh, probably this is a very positive element. So it's easier and it's uh, normal. Uh, I remember when I was younger that when you have a new machine or a new uh, computer integrated machine in the factory, uh, only few people can run it or can understand it. Uh, now, if you int introduce a new technology, all the young generation are quicker than us. In, in learning and in using. So I think this is very positive for also for, as you say, the introduction of the new generation in the factory. I think the factory are still an appealing uh, air working place uh, and we need to make this uh, more and more appealing for the young generation. Yeah. Okay, so um, Takuya Sasaki-san, uh, George Zavaleta, my friends and colleagues, uh, thank you very much for your participation, your contribution. So uh, for uh, all our uh, audience, uh, this is the end of the webinar. Uh, let me remember that after the end, you will find uh, um, uh, a QR code uh, if you will be so gentle to provide us feedback uh, uh, on this webinar. And also, if you want to follow our next uh, events, uh, please look at our website, uh, uh, staufen.et. And also on the LinkedIn, uh, we have some interesting um, events in the future. Uh, we will talk about Lean Sales uh, with Michael Webb. We will talk uh, basically about uh, uh, the best practices in the world. So we have, uh, uh, we have planned a, a best practice day that will, will be run uh, in, uh, in an international base uh, with many link and, uh, and host from different parts of the world. So as uh, 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 one time uh, people said, uh, stay tuned, as, as the old radio says. And thank you very much for your audience uh, and see you soon. <laughs>